Has anyone else noticed how much content there is to watch and consume lately? Not like there usually is, but like new stuff of like high levels of fandom are coming out. Stranger Things, Kenobi, Miss Marvel. Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 1. Well, I'm not even going to bother catching you up. Assuming at this point you're a fan of the show, you know what's going on. You've been waiting as long as everyone else due to being such a longer season, the pandemic, many of the things delaying it. It's finally here. And I want to go ahead and get something out of the way. It was a mistake to not release the season all at once. They should have just waited until July, which is when Stranger Things historically has come out, and released the, the entire thing. You have this huge buildup throughout the whole season with a binge model, and then this earth-shattering twist comes, and it ends, and you have to wait five weeks. <sighs> what I will say for this non-spoiler section is that the season is impressively put together. The scope, the ambition is kind of a marvel uh, to behold and it really pays off in those last few episodes. I do think the run times are a bit bloated. There are moments where it feels justified, where it can, you can really explore the headspace of certain characters. And then there's just other times where there's plot elements that overstay their welcome to really go nowhere. All right, from here on out, there will be spoilers for Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 1. The big exposition dump in the final episode, which unfortunately, some things online, parts of it got spoiled for me. I knew that that guy was number one. I also knew that he was Vecna. I did not know that he was the Creole boy uh, from the past. That was a great twist. There's a very, very long section where he explains everything that happens. And while it works in the moment, it does feel a little long. And there are other moments that feel kind of shortchanged. And please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't think Mike and that whole storyline appear at all in the final episode of this volume. And Hopper's story feels so drug out throughout the season. There's so much little story there and it's so good, they sparse it out, but it almost feels like he should have had his own episode to catch us up and not have these little tidbits of like four or five minutes spread out so thinly. And that's where the structure of the season, I just think really, really struggles. I've already talked about how they build up to this big climax and then it's just over for five weeks. It's not the week to week model, it's the binge model. And if you're gonna do the binge model, commit to it. If they didn't have time to finish the other episodes, then just release it all at once. It was five weeks we could have waited, but here we are. And it's just, it loses some of its momentum because of that. But I also feel in the first three episodes, which I've seen some complain are too slow, doesn't bother me at all. Sets everything up, lots of great character development, gets us back in the world. Eleven's story, she is bullied and humiliated for so long over such a course of time for it to ultimately just get her to a place where the government comes and gets her to set up the whole like training story. It's just, what was the point of all that beforehand? I didn't think it needed to be as long or be, needed to be such a big focus. And that's where I feel like the show could have cut some of that stuff out to have shorter run times or really just release 45 to 50 minute episodes and give us a 16 episode season. We don't have to have two and a half hour episodes, which reportedly is what the season finale is gonna be. I get that maybe you won't be able to see every single person in each episode, which they already did with episode seven, but it allows the episodes to be more focused and easily consumable, not with so much happening in one episode. I say that, but I was fully invested. I loved every second of it. I have enjoyed the little buddy cop parts with Joyce and the other guy's name. He suddenly knows karate, which I thought was hilarious. I will also say too, content warning, this season is much darker, much darker. Maybe I'm misremembering past seasons, but the violence in this season particularly is pretty horrific. And there's gonna be some scenes that may be hard to watch for some people. So be advised if you haven't started it yet, I know I'm a little late to this, but it can be, it can be a tough watch. But Vegna is an amazing, practically designed creature villain that is awesome. It's nice to have a villain that's not just this goo monster or this like shadowy smoke monster. Not that those weren't good and didn't have their place, but to actually have like a tangible villain who can speak and have motivations now adds so much to this and I really enjoy it. Episode four in particular, Dear Billy, I believe is what it's called, might be the best episode that Stranger Things has ever done. The ending, I was on the edge of my seat, literally not knowing what was going to happen and I was enthralled with every moment of it. Characters' arcs are well written and everyone seems to be very dynamic, 
complete characters at this point. Maybe not complete, as their journeys aren't at an end yet. They're very nuanced, every single one of them. I even really particularly love Eddie, uh, the new guy. Even though he's the oldest looking 30 year old high schooler, 18 year old I've ever seen in my life. They really take the concept of the D&D &D Dungeons and Dragons mania of the 80s where uh, a lot of parents were very concerned with some of the incidents that happened with people that got too obsessed with it. They really take that mania and heighten it to become part of the story, but they flip it on its head as well with these guys just being normal people. They're just people and they enjoy it. And it's actually the ones who become crazy and near cult-like are the ones raging against it. Chrissy's boyfriend, I can't even remember his name right now. His whole storyline is he is definitely unhinged. He is a manipulator. Anytime he gets behind a microphone, he loves to make an impassioned speech to sway people to his view. But I also kind of got frustrated that he kind of gets away with so much with no consequences. Mouthing off to the cops, starting an angry mob, beating up Eddie's friends, assaulting them with no consequences. And maybe I'll be convinced by the end of the season, but that's another thing where that's where we're left. And there's two episodes left that are going to be super duper long. Also, I'm not sure how I feel about them rekindling Steve and Nance's relationship. I like the concept of it because I like Steve as a character a lot and I really like Nance too. But Steve has grown so much and they're kind of naturally coming back together. But it feels, it feels a little icky given Jonathan's reasoning for whatever, them not being great or whatnot out of love for Nance and them not even having come in contact yet. It, it feels like she's starting to kind of emotionally cheat on him. And I'm just not sure how I feel about that. We'll see how they handle it. If the goal is to eventually get them back together, they need to reconcile Nance and Jonathan amicably first before they get there. I don't want them to bite off more than they can chew. The moment where they all get to hang out in the upside down, I thought was brilliant. But I wish they could have done a little bit more with it. They get attacked by those creatures at first, which really heightens the stakes. But then after that, they just kind of wander around with no consequences. And I was under the impression that the upside down is a little bit more dangerous than that. That's a nitpick as I still really enjoyed the moment. I also realized several times during the season that I should have rewatched it all before the season came out as there was a lot of things I just didn't remember. So you may want to do that. I know that it'll probably be a year to two years or three before we get season five, which is supposed to be the last season. And I'll definitely plan to rewatch the show before that. So I'm a little bit more clear on all the plot details from past seasons that keep being brought up. Is it the best season of Stranger Things yet? Quite possibly. I'm not really sure. Again, I need to rewatch to really decide on that. I know some people have problems with season two. I love season two. Some people have problems with season three and I thought season three was particularly strong. So we'll just have to see. It's well written, it's well shot, it's well directed, it's ambitious. And it really pays off tremendously with how the story is paying off each individual character arc, especially Hopper. His moment with Joyce in the final episode, knowing that she came for him, I just thought was really special. The jury's out on how it all come together in the final two episodes. Anyone else want to listen to Kate Bush now, or is that just me? Apparently not, because it's gone up like 8,000% in the streaming charts. Wild. Have you seen volume one of Stranger Things season four yet? What did you think? Let me know, comment, like the video, Please subscribe so I can continue to make more content like this. It really helps out. And as you watch, remember, always look for the good.